Dungeons and Drimbus is rated R for rude language, rough violence, and raunchy humor. I do declare, here's what happened previously on Dungeons and Drimbus. After returning to find Yemek miraculously alive, Gary heads up to the upper district to investigate. Finding Silvio in bad shape, and Grizabeth missing the diamond off her ring, he discovers they have resurrected Yemek temporarily to buy them time to find a more permanent solution. Not yet ready to take on the monastery, Gary returns to LRU to further his studies and strengthen his skills. After failing the class assignment for the day, he bets gold for the opportunity to take it on one more time, only to fail again and heads to the library to double down on his studies. With Silvio's help, he makes some progress, and they head back to Longreach to turn in for the day. I do declare, Yorana is back in session. So a lot, uh, how good the magic lessons? Well, yeah, it's getting there. Learned a couple new, couple learned a couple spells these past uh, few days. Angelina here is quite the catch. She's as smart as a whip. She's been a huge help around Longreach. She helped us clean up the mining system a little bit. It's a, it's a very narrow shaft, and so getting material in and out was killing up a lot of our time. But she managed to create a little uh, a pulley system to help us clear out a little faster. So. You've got a good one on your hands, Ray. Yeah, I know. How are, uh, how are you feeling about the monastery? Well, if everything still goes to plan, I uh, have I feel okay. Um, sounds like I'm, I'm a little worried about vampires getting stronger, but I think we have a good plan going. I heard you mention that, about them getting stronger. What do you mean by that? Ah, uh, so the one that uh, gave Yemek such a such a wonderful time. I felt like normally, um, not the butt of my own biscuit, but I can cut. I can put him. I can cut him down pretty nice. Uh, this one felt like chipping away. Like, like, um, she felt like a two steps forward, one step back kind of deal. If you know what I mean. No offense, Ray, <laughs> but have you ever fought a vampire before? Um, I guess not. No. Then consider yourself lucky that she was the only one there. Yeah, I was afraid that, um, she might bite me. But, yeah, she was really strong, really feral, and yeah, that was just one of them, so don't want to mess with them. And she was a lower vampire, by the way. Yeah. A vampire spawn, like what I was. People like Ed and Fred, those are the ones that turn others into vampires. They are a considerable amount stronger. And... Lad, say we were to face a, uh, a swarm of these vampires. What are our odds? Well, I, I don't want to speak for Ray. Ray, you can comment on your experience fighting one on your lonesome, but based on what I remember and what I know about my own abilities, if you were to get outnumbered by vampires, especially during the night, I, I think it would be no contest. Oh, we've been wasting time. We should be collecting garlic. Um, <laughs> we should be making a wood steaks. We should be... Uh, the, the steaks are certainly important. The garlic, not so much. Really? Popular wives' tale. That explains it. Angelina told me about that. So. Hey, I read about it in the book. Uh, however, I should explain. While the steaks are effective, the vampires have to already be dead. For that to be a thing. Okay. Well, when we attack, we should have them just in case, and we should make sure we do it in the daytime. Agreed. Basically, the, the stakes will prevent them from resurrecting, is what it is. You have to stab them through the heart. Yeah, to be honest, I um I checked to make sure that Yemek was dead first, and then I thought he might become a vampire, so I put a stake through his heart. Yeah, we, uh... We, we, we saw that, Ray. Um, didn't want him to live like that. I, I don't blame you. He would not have come back like me. He would have come back like her. He would be under her control. 
like I told you before, the only reason I can live anything resembling a normal life now is because I broke the, uh, the thrall. But the only way to do that is either to drink from another vampire or to have the vampire that turned you killed. He could have drank your blood then. A according to what I saw, <laughs> the vampire that turned him was another spawn. So I don't think she had the ability to turn him into a vampire. But if she did and we got him to drink my blood, then yes. He would remain a vampire, like me, but he would be given back his free will. I see. That is what Tomin and I did. Not far from here, actually, when we were freed. Unfortunately, he was captured, and uh, I saw them biting him again, so... If he is still alive, I'm sure he's another thrall again. Well, how, did, how are the defenses going? Barricading and whatnot. Oh, not too bad, lad. I mean, we just got started today, but... Um, We've built a kind of rudimentary guard tower, so we have a couple of uh, townsfolk up there with alarms, should anything get through. And uh, we're working on creating, you know, spikes and that sort of thing. I doubt they have any sort of siege animals, but at least until we deal with this, I, I don't want to be surprised by anything they've got. Well, technically, they shouldn't even walk in unless someone invites them. Very true, very true. However, I suppose they could enter the town. Okay, so yeah, we just make sure that people are at home if there is a siege. Yeah, we were thinking about briefing everyone on a couple of uh, emergency protocols and how to react to certain calls from the guard tower just in case something happens. Perfect, yes. Make sure you do that. Maybe, maybe the triplets can um, start working on some wooden stakes for everybody. Aye. Yeah, that, that, that sounds like a good idea. And, um, oh, Gordy, how did it go today? Oh, um, <coughs> sorry. Yeah, it went, uh, it went okay. I, I talked to administration. Um, they're definitely interested. They want to send someone out to kind of appraise the situation here since none of them have been allowed into long reach for quite a while. Uh, but they want to see what's been going on and uh, see what I've got to offer and kind of walk me through their facilities and see how I can be of use. Uh, they tried to get me to join their staff, which I'm not totally against, but um, I, I kind of want to, you know, build potions and lotions back to, to its former glory. Well, yeah, maybe you teach and they pay you either in gold or supplies. Oh, that could be really cool. I've never even thought about being a teacher. Well, yeah, you know your stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. There you go. There's something you can offer them. Amazing. Yeah, that sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> I'm really excited about this, actually. God, once we get resources flowing in here again, I, I could imagine Longreach being like a, you know, a real destination for a lot of people. To study, to raise families, to shop. It's only been a few days, and we still have a lot of work to do, but it's been refreshing seeing a little bit of the long reach I know starting to shine back through. Okay, anything else that needs updating? Not really, just uh, be nice if we could get some tea going, you know? I feel like there's a there's a cold going around here. I've seen a lot of people coughing. Damn. Gordy. Yeah? You've been having a cough? Oh, yeah. It's been, uh, I just woke up feeling kind of like congested and lots of... <coughs> Of bad coughs, but uh, then it doesn't feel too serious. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure. I'm sorry, Gordy. I think you're gonna have to start working on uh, well, you're the closest mess to a medicine man we have, I guess, but uh, I don't think this cold going around is a coincidence. Uh, what do you mean? Jorgen squints his eyes at you and he goes, What are you thinking, lad? Are you sick, Jorgen? I'm not feeling too great, but I think that's a result of my injuries. I don't know. The vampire lady looked off to me. What if it was like a virus or something? She looked off to me as well. You don't think she gave something to, to Yemek, did you, lot? It's possible. Maybe I brought it home because I was handling her, you know, in a fight. It's either that or I think Logan was talking about using um what happened here a while ago that... um. I've read about it. The Maya Plague. The Maya Plague. You say that and like his eyes kind of widen at you and he says, 
Yeah, but I hope that's not the case, lad. If that is what it is, I'm, I'm not seeing too many symptoms other than the cough, then we need to get to the monastery as soon as possible. They have cures, or they should. Uh, that, that, that's no joke, lad. So, I don't know is if there's nothing we can do to prevent it, then all we can do is uh, stay on track. We're gonna siege in a couple days. Okay. Well, uh, everyone, please keep a close eye on your symptoms. Monitor how you're feeling. And if anything changes, let me know. I'm I'm no doctor, I'm no cleric, but I, uh, I know what this thing looks like. And my son spent a long time fighting it. If, if I see anything going south, I'll, I'll be the first to let you know. Gordy, I'm going to need you to make sure you stay on top of it, too. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. Oh, jeez, that's scary. I was, uh, a thing you're concocting for Barnabas. Oh, yeah. How about that? Um, it's soothing the pain, but uh, his condition isn't necessarily getting better, if, if you understand me. It's holding him off. He's, he's able to do work. Uh, some days are worse than others, but he definitely still needs, you know, proper attention. All right, everybody, uh, wash your hands. I think I read about that somewhere. I don't know, it's supposed to help with uh, not spreading sick spirits or something. And uh, maybe if you're having symptoms, try and stay away from Barnabas. He might not be able to handle two sets of... Uh... Agreed. I think Angelina and Gorda, you, you've been dealing with him a little bit. It might be best if we uh, keep any deliveries, you know, outside the door. Okay. Uh, other than that, thank you, everybody. Uh, everybody seems to be doing a good job. I know you're all doing the best you can. Um, yeah, I'm going to go check on Barnabas and then get ready for tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Ray. I'll, uh, I guess I'll see you for school tomorrow. That's right. Okay. You know, I need my study, buddy. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah, I'll just see how Barnabas is doing. Yeah, you uh, you head out to his little station, and you see like as the days have progressed, it's gotten like more and more. I guess cluttered isn't the right word because it's not messy, but just filled to the brim with materials he's requested, different concoctions he's brewing, and you see he has like different vats going where he's like dipping threads and materials and you see them absorbing certain uh, fluids. And he has actually begun already the sewing of some of the cloaks. You see he has little patches. Some of them are like more opaque. You can't see anything under it, but you can, it looks like a shadow. There's one that's like really clear. It blends in perfectly to the stuff underneath it on the table, but whatever's underneath it kind of like bleeds through a little bit. So you can tell he's been messing with like different methods and different proportions to getting these threads just right. And he sees you and he goes, <coughs> Ray, so good to see you, lad. I didn't get the opportunity to thank you, but I was talking to Yemek earlier today. Oh, I, well, what what a p delight to see him again. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing. Uh, yourself? Oh, I'm <coughs> maintaining at the very least. Far better than I was when you found me. Glad to hear it. Uh, yeah, everything's going okay. You need any help with something? Or... I, I think I've got most of it. The, uh, the triplets have been a huge help. I heard that we're trying to keep people from uh, leaving the town too much, and I, I think I have everything I need. I did have a question for you, though. Assuming we're not sending them out for more missions, which I agree is probably not <coughs> the right move, um, we need to make a decision. Do you want one large cloak, or do you want two more tailored cloaks? Basically... I think I have enough material to either make two that would fit an individual comfortably as a cloak to wear and move around, or I can make one much bigger one, but it'll be more of a sheet, so either multiple people can move under it, or if you need to hide an object, like a big object, you could hide it under there and have it remain rather inconspicuous. Uh, but it will be more cumbersome to move around in covertly. Is that going to affect uh, the time that you've finished? Either one will take me the same amount of time. It's just a matter of if you want one large sheet or two fitted cloaks. Wow, that's a good question, but I think I'm going to go with two fitted cloaks. Okay, well, in that case, 
I'm almost done making the material, and then it's just a matter of tailoring it into a size that's going to fit you. So if I if I deprive myself of sleep, I should have this ready tomorrow. If I if I rest up, probably the day after that. So it's coming along well, Ray. <coughs> I really appreciate all you're doing, Barnabas. And we appreciate you. And yeah, thank uh, the gods that uh, we got Yemek back for now. Hopefully someone at the monastery can help. He was uh, filling me in on your plan, and I think it's a good one. So far, it's been on track. So, fingers crossed, knock on all your wood, whatever. You see, he, like, very gently, like, he almost doesn't want you to notice it, but he thinks it's funny. So you see, like, a, a little smile on his face as he's holding in laughter, and he knocks on his crotch. <laughs> on his crotch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And he says, all right, can I do anything else for you, Ray? I don't remember, and don't worry about it now, but I don't remember if I asked you about that reclaimer armor. What about it? Did I ha- hand it to you to work on it? I, I don't think so. I don't recall that. No. Yeah, don't worry about it right now. Um, It was just a little extra thing, but of course the cloak comes first. Then otherwise, yeah, that's it. Okay. Marvelous. Well, I know it's getting late, but... uh. They just brought me my dinner, and I I like to eat while I work, so I'm probably going to be at it for another hour or two before I turn in. Yeah, yeah. Let me get out of your hair. All right. You have a good night, Ray. You too. And you head off to bed for the night, seeing that Longreach is becoming fortified. They have, thankfully, through Gordy, begun to establish relationships with LRU. The tunnel is nearly complete, as are the cloaks. And you're establishing security systems to keep the citizens in place. As you're going to bed, you're you're settling in, reflecting on the day, and Calvin, Silas, and Solera come up to you, and Calvin goes, Hey, Daddy, how was, um, how was the school? Uh, it was rough today, but, um, it was all right. I, um, I was one, I wanted to know if maybe, uh, if you wanted to t- teach me again, uh, um, I want to. I want to learn how to do big magics like you. What time is it? Angelina? Yeah. What time is it? Uh, I uh, Probably like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. We don't really have clocks, you know, and the sundial's outside, so. All right, Calvin, if you, um, I mean, I don't know who Calvin is. Wink, wink. Uh, Jeremiah, um, before we get to the big spells, you still have to master the little ones. So, uh, if you want to, we can work on your mage pinky and turn it into a mage hand. Okay, can you teach Silas and Solara also? Because I've been, I've been poking them with the pinky and they want to learn how to do the magic. They said they want to learn how to fly less drunk. Do you know how to do that? Flying? No. I, uh, but... We can all work together on the mage hand. Mr. Glop, Mr. Glop and me, can you teach, uh, do you think you could teach me how to do a mage middle finger? Uh, after we do the other fingers first. Okay. All right. Let's see, uh, let's see what you got. Okay. And Gary begins his magic lesson. Now it's important that your mind and the magic are one, so I want you just to imagine the pinky going out there, just... Imagine, Imagine the pinky, pinky is out there, right? It's going. Think about it. Focus. We're halfway there. Beware, children. It's the half blood prince. Wow, really? You're gonna make fun of me because I have sickle cell anemia? You suck, man. Oh, psh, I, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> children, please! <laughs> ah! This, this is the Halftime Ad with Nikki B. Okay, so looks like whoever took your beloved scruffess and scrufflets also got their hands on the not-so-daily Drimbus and is throwing all they can at us to try and stop our progress. But why? Who cares? The scrufflets need us. Right. What we need to do is arm ourselves. But I'm broke. Right. If only there were some magical store filled with goodies at a reasonable price with a discount code to support my favorite podcast. I got it! No, 
Mickey, now is not the time to buy more dice. But look! Eldritch Edge Metal Dice Set. Look at the sick shapes! The hefty metal construction, the positively eldritch edges and ridges! With our ninja training, we can make anything into a lethal weapon. Armed with dice of such incredible craftsmanship, we would be unstoppably unstoppable. You have a dice problem, Nikki. <laughs> uh, no, uh, so what? No, no. Tell, tell me I'm wrong. You're not. But you just said you were broke. Well, when I use offer code Drimbus, I get 10% off these already incredibly priced dice. Okay, fine, let's get the dice. Oh, while well, you're on that phone, you should check on our friends. The patrons of patreon.com slash Drimbus? Yeah, I want to make sure the villains who abducted my scruff ex haven't put their hands on her. Let me just shoot him a message on the Discord. Hey... Queso Loco, Jerry Benetados, Victoria Madrid, Greta and Beignet, Alex Gapes My Ass, Ace Andrews, Regina Russell, Salty Sam Olivos, Jordan Cobb, The Unnamed Rogue, John Gillette, NB Star, Doubtful Guest, Michael Rector's Davis Walden, Denny Dewdrop, Myth Mouse, Kelly Wolf, Brandon M. Bishop Bridge, Wiglets, Joanna, Wes Berger, Stan Sitzman, Scrambles the Death Dealer, Aaron Adams, Nathan Mesner, Rue Thanatos, Morgan Lawson, Stoner Panda, Melissa Rain, Hensational, Butts Plenty, The Lone Trumpeter, Normally Me, Dane Kolhoff, Loon, Luna, the State of Alaska, gotta let them know. Faust, the Heavenly Demonic Monster, Mosh Coffee, Official Anarchy, and David Carlton. Just checking to make sure y'all are okay. P.S. Are you getting my messages? Love you, bye. And send. You wake up the next morning, normally but to the sounds of lots of coughing in the palace room. <laughs> As whatever bug seems to be going around seems to have spread to the vast majority of people. At the moment, it's nothing nasty, but you're just hearing... Now that you are tuned into it, you're noticing a lot of coughing. But you wake up and Grisabeth goes, <coughs> Good morning, handsome. Morning, beautiful. You know, and she runs a hand along your chest like that new transmogrified flesh. She goes, I kind of like, it's like a tattoo. It's, I like it. Well, don't get used to it. Good morning. Morning, buddy. How are you? And he pokes you in the cheek with a little mage pinky. <laughs> We're good. Good. You? I could. <coughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's get something to eat. And you guys go and you get breakfast and... You begin getting ready for the day. What's Scare Bear up to today? Well, Cal, you probably um, try to stay away from anybody who's coughing, all right? Okay. And uh, where is Yargan? Is Yargan around? You can easily find Yargan. Yeah, in the morning, he's there having breakfast. Yeah, I'll go find Yargan. Yeah. You walk up to him. He's eating his breakfast, and he's actually changing the bandage uh, for his wound. And he's been more than a lot. So, Yargan, hmm. um, you're talking about security. Do we have an army now, or what's going on with that? Not quite. To be to be frank with you, lad, we don't have a lot of fighters here, but um, basically you're setting up spikes at the entrance. Should any large, uh, you know, mounted creature show up, we could try and barricade off the entrance. And we've got people at the, uh, at the guard towers in the front keeping an eye out. Uh, should they see anything suspicious, they can ring the alarms. It's kind of like a big horn. And uh, at least we know something's coming our way and we can figure it out. However, I'm hoping the fight won't come to us. I'm hoping we can uh, head to the monastery and deal with it there and not endanger any of the people of Long Reach. Well, you gotta prepare for the worst. Who are our guards? Are they former soldiers? Or are they just citizens uh, that volunteered? Presently, the triplets have volunteered to take shafts. Yeah, okay. I was just curious, because uh, we probably lost most of our fighters Aye. taking out the king. Aye, we're definitely going to have to uh, 
try and entice new people over if we ever do need guards or reclaimers. Or the, the triplets get those stakes going. I feel like everybody should have at least one. Yep, they uh, they've been a they've been a big help on that. They got started this morning. Actually, I spoke to them last night after we ate dinner before I went to bed, and they spent up all night working on stakes. All right, perfect. Uh, well, should be any day now, right? That we get that tunnel through. Aye, lad, we're uh, maybe a day out. I will say, after our conversation with uh, Silvio yesterday, I'm a little bit concerned about the threat that we're walking into. If that swarm of bats, if they are all vampires, we stand no chance against them. Well, what we need to do is take out the head vampire, right? Aye. I suppose that would give them their free will back. If they were all people like him, perhaps they would come to their senses and s- cease the attack. Do you know who was in charge of them? Who was it again? I'm sorry, I, I haven't got much chance to speak to him. In charge of uh, the vampires? Hi. Um, a Fred and an Ed, I think. That's right. I don't know if this is them, but if we can get an identification on what they look like, that might be a helpful before we actually go in. Mm, Do we have any artists? Yeah, certainly. A ton in the troop. Oh, yeah. Well, we can get one of those artists and uh, bring him to Silvio. And we can get our artist to draw what uh, Silvio can describe Ed and Fred look like. That sounds like a good plan to me. Yeah, but, um, well, I really have no idea what to expect when we go in there. Except that your son's probably in there. If we go during the daytime, hopefully the vampires are uh, sleeping in their coffins, and we just drive a just drive a stake through them under the uh, cover of the invisibility. Here's hoping. All right, I'm gonna go find Silvio, and uh, we'll see if he, we can get some drawings so we can get some identifications. Okay. All right, I'm gonna grab my croissant and coffee and go find Silvio. Yeah, you grab your croissant and coffee and you find Silvio slurping down some potato soup and reading over the notes he's been taking in his book. Are you going me to school today, Silvio? I'm feeling a lot better, Ray, so yeah. <clears throat> Certainly. Listen, Jorgen thinks that we should identify those two you were saying Ed and Fred, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, you know what they look like. Of course. We, yes. we should get a bot to draw your descriptions of them. That way people can identify them. Certainly. I can head down and do that and then head over to the library afterwards. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'll see you later. Yeah, just be careful with them. They're, uh, they're a kooky crowd. Uh, I, I gathered as much, yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was quite entertaining. I, w- I would love to attend a, a proper production. All right. I'm going to head out. Okay. Good luck, Ray. I'll need it. Yep. <laughs> he finishes his soup as you head off to school. As you arrive at LRU, you just very narrowly dodge out of the way of Duke as he's running for a frisbee. <laughs> oh, hey, Ray. What's up, bro? He uh, he holds out like to high five you. Uh, was, isn't class about to start? Yeah, I was, uh, I was just going to head over there now. Just uh, finishing up my game of frisbee. And he throws the frisbee really far. <laughs> Is there, like, a frisbee team in this school? Yeah, pretty much all of Sigma Pi Alpha, isn't it? Spa? Yeah. The little guys start out as Alphas, the big guys become the Sigmas. Well, we all like Pi. So. <laughs> right. Guess I'll see you inside. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, you still do you, you still want to come to that party tonight? Oh, it's tonight? Yeah. Yeah, I might, uh... I'll, I'll have to get home and change first, and then maybe I'll... Come back for the party. Sure, sure. It's nothing too fancy, but uh, <laughs> I got, we, we got some cool stuff going on tonight. Right. It'd be fun to have you over. Yeah, I'll, I'll, if I can make it, I'll be there. Cool, cool. All right. You want to walk over to class? Yep. Let's go. He like runs like a dog to class. <laughs> and you sit in class. Today's lesson is largely about uh, transmutation. So you are learning about the very many ways in which this is applicable in daily life as like simple things. With each school of magic, the professor kind of does a deep dive onto some of the standard professions 
that you see them being used in a lot. And so with transmutation, you have simple applications as base components for larger things like alchemy. You also see it in like common trade jobs. Uh, they're great for communication. They are used often for public facing jobs. So uh, transmutation is a, is a very useful one today. But eventually the professor leads you out to the field and uh, Professor Azure says, Very well. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to split you all up into teams and each person is going to have a different uh, objectives today in a scenario that is going to involve the entire class. Let me see over here. Uh, Ryan, if you can And he begins and divvying everyone things. up into groups. And he pairs you with Duke, he says. Ray, you, uh, you certainly tried your best. I would like to see you and Duke collaborate a little more effectively. Here we are. And he creates this cone of silence over the three of you. Your objective during this exercise is going to be to take this scroll. And he hands you a scroll. He says, For the purposes of this simulation, this scroll is going to contain very sensitive war information. Uh, you are going to have to deliver it to the person uh, with the black raven tattoo. Do not let it fall into the hands of anyone else. Okay. Understood. Okay. And he dispels the cone of silence and moves on to the next group and kind of keeps doing the same things to give everyone their objective. And he says, Okay, is everyone ready to begin? Ready. The TAs all start pumping that fog again. And the whole field transforms as you and Duke find yourselves in the back of a cart in a forest. Suddenly, you hear in your head a message as Duke is driving the cart. And you hear his voice reverberating inside your head. He says, I get, it looks like uh, there's some sort of a uh, checkpoint coming up. I, I guess I'll just try and get us through. You got the scroll? Uh, I look around to see if I have it. You have it on you. Okay. He's like telecommunicating to my head. Yeah. And you get the feeling just like you, you feel it innately that you can probably just think and respond back. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Yeah, I have it. Um, how are you doing that? It's message. It's a cantrip. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, yeah. Here, try responding to me with just your thoughts. Uh, can you hear this? This? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can actually. All right. Hey, hey we're uh, we're coming up on this. I'm gonna pretend. Uh, look in the back. Is there anywhere you can hide or something? Uh, I want to pretend I'm by myself. Let me see. So Gary's gonna check the back. Okay. Roll an investigation check for me. Fifteen. You're in the back of a cart. There are kind of like boxes of supplies in there. And you see that the seat that you are on is like a ledge that lifts up like a little chest. Ooh. So if you wanted to, you could get in there. Or, you know, you can stay out and do whatever else you want to do. How fast is the cart going? Pretty. Sl it's like uh, the opening credits of Skyrim. Okay. Gary's going to like hop out the back and follow the cart and see... If there's a space for him underneath the cart. Hmm. Roll another investigation check for me. 17. Yeah, you actually find that in the areas under the axle, basically, you could, like, squish your hand and your leg up against it, and with a lot of force kind of remain, like, stuck to the underside of the carriage. Okay. Hey, Duke, stop it for a second. I found a spot to hide. Yeah. He brings it to Wally. He says, okay, they've got eyes on us. Be quick. And it's going to scuttle underneath the cart. Okay, roll an acrobatics check for me. Ooh. Wow. Six. You try to hold on and it is slick with mud and you slip and fall. <sighs> and then you just hear in your brain, okay, we good to go. No, hold on. I'm just going to get in here. He climbs back inside. He's going to go in that little under the seat that you can lift. Okay, you get in under the seat as you hear in your brain, oh, hold up, they're, coming, they're to coming to us. us. And then you hear someone saying, so, hello there. Hi. What, uh, what brings you around these parts, big boy? Just, uh, delivering some cargo. Uh, yep. Hmm, very well, very well. And what of your friend? What friend? <laughs> the friend that we just saw rolling around in the muck. Is he back there? Uh, oh. Yeah, that's just my uh, my buddy Ray. Hey Ray, you back there? And you hear in your head, get out, get out. They know you're here. They know you're here. Gary's gonna quietly get out. He's going to peek his head out the back and 
misty step into the trees. Great. You hear the person stepping around the back going, let's just have a look, see ya. And you appear in the brush. Roll a stealth check for me to see if you can make a nice quiet landing. 19. Okay. You land perfectly unnoticed. Where is your friend? What, he's not back there? No! Uh, I don't know where he went then. And you see them kind of searching. They search immediately inside, like under the seats. They start checking under the carriage and they go, all right, you're coming with us. I I gotta deliver my shipment. And they're like, no, no, no. We know you have that message. They pull him out of the cart and he's like, hey, hey, hey. And you see he tries to vortex warp. (laughs) Oh shit, 20. So he perfectly vortex warps. (laughs) And throws them off into the trees, and he goes, all right, all right, get in, Ray, get in, get in, let's go. Yeah, Gary runs back into the cart. Get back here! You see Duke points a finger out the window and casts web, and webs up the other student to the tree. And you guys proceed on your way. Gary, uh, roll a perception check for me. 13. You think you feel something, like brush against you, but nothing. You hear in your head, do go, all right, uh, we're getting to the little village area. We got to find the guy with the, the black raven tattoo. Right. I'm going to search the back of this car. For what? A bug or something. Okay, roll. 13. You don't find anything in the back of the cart. All right, so where is he? What are we doing here? Well, uh, look, it's a little street market. There's a bunch of people. We got to find whoever the guy with the raven tattoo is. I was told, uh, it should be magical, if that helps at all. Yeah, it does. Uh, Gary pulls out the war pick and detects magic. Okay. As you detect magic, you immediately catch a strong aura of magic coming out of Duke's back pocket. You also detect a fainter signal of magic coming a little further off into the street market. And he goes, oh, what's, uh, what's that thing? Duke. Yeah? Don't panic. Check your back pocket. Slowly. He slowly reaches his hand into his back pocket and goes, Why should I be worried? What's in it? Um, and at this point, please roll a dexterity saving throw. That is a 15. He immediately pulls his hand out from his back pocket and points his finger at you. And a web begins to spring out where you're standing, but you manage to, like, jump and roll away from it. And he goes, oh, fuck. Oh, my God. Immediately, you see all of the other students who are being people in the market turn their heads to you guys. Oh, my God. Gary's gonna cast Hideous Laughter on Duke. <laughs> okay. Does it 10 save? It doesn't. He goes, where are you? <laughs> 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 and he literally starts rolling on the floor laughing. <laughs> and I run away with the war pick out following the magic. You still feel the strong magic coming from his back pocket. The fainter magic. I'm going to run after that one. You begin following it down. You now see a-, a lot of the other students are really like confused looking around. They're looking at you. They're looking at him. You see like three students run to Duke and like tackle him and start patting him down. <laughs> but you keep following and eventually the signal gets stronger and stronger and stronger as you bump into Serana, who you recognize as one of the students from class. As you bump into her, she looks at you and goes, oh, and you look down at her wrist and you see she has a little black uh, glowing raven tattoo on her wrist. Gary grabs the hands, looks closely at the tattoo, then looks up at her, grabs uh, the scroll from his back pocket with the other hand. She she says, yeah, do you have the scroll? And as you reach into your back pocket, you do not find the scroll on your person. Oh, no. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, come with me. You guys begin running, and as you do, the simulation ends. All the dust dissipates. And Professor Azure says, Okay, very well done to uh, Lilith and Rolf. Excellent work. The rest of you, not too bad. In particular, Ray. You were dealing with a traitor on your team. Very well done. Did we get the scroll? (laughs) Uh, No, you failed. All right. And at this point, Duke comes up to you and he says, Sorry. The professor gave me a secret message in my head, said my goal was to uh, was to steal the scroll and capture the raven. But how did you take the scroll? I didn't even feel it. 
I mage handed you very lightly. <sighs> hey, not. I mean, you did pretty great though. You kind of fucked me up. I ended up getting tackled by some other dudes who took the scroll. I think they won. Yeah. And as you guys are talking, Serana says, um, "Yeah, I was kind of just like a moving target. I kept having to hide from people. Uh, how'd you find me? That thing's pretty cool." Oh, um, some guy. I uh, okay, well. Some guy made this war pick that I got. It's got a detect magic in it. Cool. Okay, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for all of your hard work in place today. Very proud of all of you. Please remember, magic is an evolving art. This was a very interesting experiment to simulate more real-world conditions where you are dealing with uh, multiple targets, uh, different objectives, and... Uh, very proud of those of you who tried new spells today, those of you who uh, went out of your way to... Uh, try new techniques and try even I saw a couple of people dabbling in different schools of magic. It does not hurt to experiment. That is what class is for. Great work everyone and I will see you all tomorrow. And as your ends class and then Duke goes, alright well I gotta go get ready for the party uh, am I seeing you there Serana? Yeah, I uh I think I'll swing by for a little bit. I, I'm not really much of a party person but uh, it could be fun are, are you gonna be there Ray? Um, I think so just, uh, gotta get home first and, uh, clean up. And then if I can go, yeah, I'll be there. All right, cool. See you guys tomorrow. Oh, I thought it was tonight. Or, I meant, like, at school. Right. Yeah, I'll see you tonight. All right. All right. Peace out, Bress. And he runs away. Where to now? The library. Okay. You head to the library and you head up to the third floor where you find Silvio, his nose in multiple books. <laughs> What are you going to work on? It would be nice to know that tower. Okay. You decide to pick up where you left off with your failed tower. Give me an arcana check for that first tower. Four. Baffles you. You you begin regretting that you ever even tried to pick <laughs> the uh, the tower. <sighs> Sylvia looks up at you. He says, how's it going, Ray? Um, I'm having trouble with this one. I want to learn this spell. It could be really useful. Um, so... Gotta make this tower here. It's a conjuration thing, but uh, it doesn't make sense. You're supposed to turn counterclockwise, but also inside out. It doesn't. That doesn't work. And, and inverted. I don't. I think. Uh, let, me, let me have a look. Uh, says, I think the inside out is referring to the position of the hands. The counterclockwise is your body, and then the other. <laughs> he starts like trying to break it down. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll an arcana check for the second hour. Uh, fifteen. Okay. After looking at it for an hour with Silvio, you've kind of broken it down into chunks of like what needs to happen that you don't understand any of them yet, but you're like, okay, here's one problem I gotta figure out, here's another problem I gotta figure out, and here's the other problem I gotta figure out. Okay. So your understanding progresses a little bit. All right, so that's the hand motion there. It's not exactly inverted, it's just kind of mirrored. Why don't you give it another try? Uh, I was reading a theory today about, about the mind-magic connection which I know he went over that day in class. Why don't you try visualizing the tower a little more? See how that works. Okay. First floor. 13. Okay. You don't slide backwards, but you also kind of don't progress in your understanding. Um, no, it just sticks and stones. Okay. Why don't you take some notes for the next hour or so, and uh, then maybe we step outside where you can practice it a little better. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead and give me a roll. 16. Okay, you take very detailed notes. You feel like it's it's making pretty solid sense to you now where with a little practice, you should be able to pull it off. But study and practice are two different things. So at that point, Sylvia goes, okay, I'm pretty much done for the day. Looks like everyone's heading home. I could stick around for another hour or so if you want to practice outside. But after that, I think I want to go home. Yeah, I think I've almost got it. Okay. And you guys walk out onto the field to try and practice your tower. Give me another roll. Eight. You try and you try, and kind of like last time, you get the first few floors, and then it keeps collapsing. Mm, almost there, just something's off. I'm I'm kind of tired, Ray. Do you, <clears throat> you mind if I if I head home, or do you want me to stick around? This wizard and shit is no joke. No, it it's is tough. Not. You go ahead. Yeah. Um. Okay. I'm almost got it. I I'm almost there. Okay. He heads home. And you spend another hour just building tower after tower after tower. There's rubble everywhere. <laughs> Give me that roll. 
15. Describe to me how you finally build your tower. Uh, I'll make a tower out of wood and it's two stories. It ends up making a washroom with toilets, wash tubs, <laughs> a magical brazier, and sauna benches. <laughs> Beautiful, yeah. So you begin to swirl your fingers. You're turning inside out. Your hands are inverted. You're turning and twisting, and we see from the ground, like it, it almost looks like the ground turns bubbly as things just appear from it. And we see one wood plank go up. We see nails just apparating on the wood as we see the wash basins forming and then the walls forming around that. Then the ceiling, we're seeing like swirls of, it looks like a hurricane just full of like timber and construction materials as it whirls up to the second floor and the second floor begins building as splinters of wood join to form entire planks. And finally, 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 you finish the twists of your hands, cross them away, the swirling disappears, and we see a two-story wash house as your first tower. Oh, finally. And then he runs inside, goes up to the second story, and takes a shit in the toilet. <laughs> you do that, and then uh, as you're finishing your shit, you see uh, one of the wood panels falls off, and like you, you feel like the tower's starting to turn a little shaky <laughs> as you run back out before the spell disappears. <laughs> This has been Your Honor. Your Honor features the vocal talents of Nicholas Benetados as Gary Mogba. The rest of the world is voiced by your DM, Giancarlo Herrera. Editing was done by Hannah Schooner and Giancarlo Herrera with sound design by Giancarlo Herrera. If you want to support the show, consider checking out the links in the show notes or go to patreon.com slash our patrons get access to exclusive perks like our After the Show show, After the Drimbus, free exclusive merch, bonus series, and the chance to create items for the show or have NPCs named after you. Oh, and don't forget to tweet using hashtag Drimbus to be entered to win a free Dungeons & Drimbus sticker. Thank you all so much for listening, and I do declare I'll see you all next week.